All right, so boom. The Young Boy Never Broke Again memes have been at an all-time high recently. Literally, whenever I go to any post on Instagram or Twitter that's related to hip-hop, there's always someone there saying, NBA Young Boy is better at, like, blank. It don't even gotta be hip-hop. It can be about anything. I saw a post about this woman who got arrested for sneaking into high schools and posing as a student, and she was telling, like, other students to follow her on Instagram. Why does somebody respond to this post talking about, Young boy sneaks into high school is better. <laughs> I, I've seen people make whole accounts about this meme and I was just like, you people can't be this serious. Is he even that good of a rapper for y'all to be acting this way? So I said like, well, let's get it. Like the next Am I Sleeper episode is gonna be on him. Let's see if Young Boy is better than KHD and if Young Boy got any songs that's better than Who Am I? Who am I? When I rap is for everything, nigga, do I die? I'm kind of lethal with all materials utilized. Hate is scanning my lyrics, they want to scrutinize. Looking for something to post about me. Majority of the world don't really know about me. They just want to alert me, trying to find some dirt they can expose about me. But I'm not tripping, I'm just living. If I quit my rap today, like, can you go without me? Of course not. Taught myself to value. Follow KHD on his YouTube channel, Instagram, and Twitter for more fire music from him. But let's get right to it. Youngboy is easily one of the most popular rappers in the game, and it's time to see what the fuss is about. Starting with my own personal choice, I picked Peace Harley. I can't barely keep peace Harley, lie like they all and I see I leave people. The first line of this track sounded like some SoundCloud rapper stuff. I seriously don't know what happened with the mixing here or Youngboy's voice, but his voice when he said the second line is completely different from his voice when he said the first line. I peep this. But speaking of his voice, it was something I had a hard time getting used to. Lyrically, there isn't anything to discuss. It's really your simple gangster rap song about how he got his mind on his money, him and any goon on his team will be quick to put you in the dirt if you disrespect them, and having some chill females to kick it with. My favorite line in this whole song is when he says, one million, two million, three million, wanna be with a nigga hoe ass some more. That nigga, <laughs> he just like, man, I ain't being with no bitches that can't add to my bankroll. Like, I like that. And I do like young boy's flow on here, especially the way he was going off in the second verse. I'ma clear this bitch out with my mug again. Now I'm back in this bitch, got a thug again. Full of Zans, I be popping it with a 10. 30 straps in the car when I'm with Lil Ben. Catch another, I ain't thinking another sin. In terms of flow, I was like, yo, like he actually spazzing. <laughs> this is definitely a song where, even though the lyrics are generic, in terms of his flow, I know why people would hear this and say, like, yo, young boy went off on Peace Harley. I see why. But for me, like, it solely comes down to his voice on why I can't rock with this track. After playing this, I was like, man, like this is the first song and I'm already annoyed with how he sounds. If this is what his voice is going to sound like for a lot of his music, I'm already not a fan of it. I saw a comment on the video that said Youngboy's high-pitched voice is underrated. His versatility is on a thousand. I'm like, what? But let's just get into the rest of the tracks. The next song was recommended by at Gully underscore the underscore animator on Instagram. And he suggested me listen to Free the Dog. First of all, I wanted to say that I wasn't surprised at all that Gully Boy is the one that recommended this song. <laughs> My man's Gully is 100% the type of dude where one of his favorite styles of rap is that bust your head open, rob you and your bitch kind of music. Once I heard the rhythm and the style of song that this was, I was like, yeah, this is Gully. <laughs> but I'm sure y'all already know the first thing I'm about to point out. As soon as this man started talking and I heard that, bitch. <laughs> I was like, what is this dude saying? <laughs> now, kind of similar to what I said about Peace Harley, this song is like really generic lyrically. I'm already starting to feel that young boy's hype comes from like just his sound, like his appearance and his flow or something. Because just judging off of this song and Peace Harley already, this is the same Robin, I'll put a nigga in the dirt music that you can get anywhere else. But I will say, hearing this with some bass, like, I know this song will go hard as hell. I know why people will bump this. Whether y'all just chilling, riding in the whip, or for you criminals out there that's listening to this and y'all know who y'all are. Some of y'all watching this video know y'all selling something you shouldn't be selling or doing something you shouldn't be doing. I get why this will appeal to y'all. When I was reading the comments on this song too, it was loaded with people saying like, this song makes me wanna like X, Y, and Z, those type of comments. And I saw one <laughs> where this, this person said, young boy is the type of person who will shoot their phone with a gun and call it a screenshot. Y'all some goofies, man. 
But I will say, I see why people go like, man, like that song is hard when talking about Free the Dog. It's just for me, like because it's still like basic street rap, so I can do without it. The next track is another Instagram recommendation and it's from at I am Yvonne Barrientos and it's called Genie. Bro, like I already had high hopes for this song as soon as I heard young boys like spiel at the beginning. He wasn't even rapping yet. He was just talking saying that he's just going to live until it's time for him to go. And he was going to be putting some real pain in this song. As soon as I heard that, I trapped in. It was like, okay, like we finally about to get something other than some cliche trap stuff. But instead of it being some cliche trap stuff, it ended up being some cliche melodic stuff. I was so disappointed in the song Genie. I was hoping that he would have spoken about his personal life and been specific with things. Talking about like how it is raising his four children. Like dude is 18 with four children when he made this song. Saying something specific about like any of his baby moms, like being locked up, like his life on the street, like something. But instead, most of the songs are typical lines that you can legit get from anywhere else. Don't tell me that you love me if you ain't gonna die for me. You can stay the fuck from around me if you ain't gonna ride from me. Tell me you would never leave, how you just gonna lie to me. I guarantee y'all if any up and coming rapper, like some dude on SoundCloud or whatever, was showing off his music and saying these exact lyrics, y'all would either clown that rapper or say, like, nah, fam, like this is way too generic. You gotta make music more unique to you. But because Youngboy is saying that, y'all hyping this shit up to the moon. Now, although he doesn't name drop anyone, there are some lines in here that can be about a special lady in his life. But once again, it's just simple lines like, being in love never helped me solve my problems. I wish that I can find a girl just like my mama. Speaking of his mama, one of the biggest lines that stuck out to me is when he said, whole lot of hair run, I saw that shit right in front of my mama. Now, like, that's harsh if he was really out here doing that. And another plus that I will give him for Genie is that his single was good. Like, I'll give him that. His singing and the beat too. It's the same type of melodic beat that people typically use when they rapping about topics like this. So as much as I wanted to like Genie, I, I couldn't help but realize like this song is only nice because of the singing and the production. The lyrics themselves were incredibly mid. The worst part about all this is, like, did y'all know this is his most popular song on YouTube? At the time of this video, this is at 311 million views, which is 11 million more than Bandit with Juice World. Like, I can't believe it. So like Yvonne Barrientos, I'm sorry bro, Like, this is Youngboy's most popular song, but it was a whole skip for me. But let me switch to the recommendations on YouTube to see if there's some heat over there. The first song recommended from Ontario Ivy is Uncharted Love. This was my favorite song of the four I've listened to so far. When I got the Uncharted Love, I went like, okay, like now I'm feeling it. One of the first moments that caught my eye is how he's changed his singer voice a little bit when he said, I took the wrong route, made it out, see me now. I took the wrong route, made it out, see me now. Fuck all the charges and the blouse that never brought me down. That part had me look at my screen again and go like, hold, hold on, hold on, like this song is starting off nice. Now I did go into this track thinking that it was solely about his love for a woman or so, but then I realized it's a song about his love for the streets and his love for his bros and his family. The reason I thought it was about a woman at first was for one, the hook. Y'all y'all know how the hook goes, that, that baby, I know, like that, that whole shit. You see me riding on alone, baby come see me, the good in me, cause they won't accept me and I feel scarred for my wrongs. So I was like, I know he not out here calling his homeboys baby. Like I would never be that cool with a nigga to let, to let him call me that in harmony. Another line being, I be one of you inside my life, but you're out there fucking around with these lanes and I would try to make it right, but you would try to make me feel ashamed. Now lines like this will make you think it's a song to his lover, like whoever that is. But then the other half of the song are filled with, you know, his street rhymes. Or maybe I'm just too thug for all this shit. I lost my thugs behind this shit. Do dirty work in fucking towns. We leave the mark above the realm. You was like my brother while you crossed that line, but a fat bitch mind before he tried. So I do think the song is like kinda unfocused on who he's supposed to be talking to or talking about. It comes off as a song where he's pleading to like anybody that will listen and just telling them he's going to stay strong and not let any negative media attention or the op stop him. But even with these criticisms, I definitely like the song and I thought it was the best one so far. Since we caught a dub with the YouTube recommendation, let's go with another one. Next up, recommended from Lifestyle, we have Permanent Scars. I came in with the dope boys. I came in with the rock stars. From the beginning, I played my part. Who would have thought I would like a song with damn Young Thug and Tykeon Bowman? Better known by his stage name, Quando Rondo, but I'm gonna call him by his government. But hey, Permanent Scars? Now, like, this was hot. Like, this was hot. 
So you guys know whenever someone like enters a particular like field of something and they make a big impact right out the gate and people say, oh, that person left their mark early. Leaving a mark meaning you burst onto the scene and you was already doing better than a lot of other people and you was already being impactful. That's what this song is, but the mark he's leaving, he calls it a scar. And the reason he's calling it permanent is because he already knows even years down the line, there's going to be one and only young boy never broke again. And everybody will remember the run he had in the game. Another dub for me, like his singing was hitting too. I came in with the dope boys. I came in with the rock stars. Now something like this, I, I understand the hype behind. I don't see how people can listen to his singing on Peace Harley and thinks that sounds just as good as this. And y'all definitely better not be thinking it's better either. Speaking of Young Thug and Tykeon Bowman, the both of them rap about the same things, which are just the bad bitches they with, the money they got, a thugger shouting out Young Stunner Life, Bowman talking about the guns he told them. Like, it wasn't anything to hear and be like, yo, like, these two features killed it. But they still got the job done. The highlight to me was Young Boy. Like, like I said, his singer was on point and it was a cool meaning to the song. Yeah, I love the game, I'm burning this car. So yeah, Lifestyle, you definitely recommended a great song with this one. Let's start with the Twitter recommendations now that we're halfway through the video. From at Ant underscore Joestar, we have Solar Eclipse. And right after that dub that was Permanent Scars, this man went right back to being NBA Young Mid. When I got to Solar Eclipse, this is when I pretty much confirmed that this man is a very basic lyricist. The reason he's loved so much is because like, he's a nice singer. I'll give him that. He got some songs where his harmonies be hidden. And he has a good flow. Like rapping his songs back with the flow that he has, I'd be like, okay, young mid, okay. Going off that molly, I'm zooting and booty. Got snake on my collar, I'll tell you it's Gucci. I swear that I'm body, you play, I'm a shooter. I'm a 38, baby, I swear that I'm ruthless. So I definitely get the vibe from him that if you ignore what he says and you just want to hear something that sounds good, then yeah, young boy can be for you. But with me, like the same thing I said about Free the Dog and Genie, the fact that he's spitting like the most basic lines imaginable kind of takes me out of it. Before the fame, I was trapped up on Valley Park with a Glock. I was selling them rocks, the police stay watching, said he passing by the block. I created that gang forever I bang, nigga, I'll never stop. I stay in my lane, I'm never gonna change, nigga playing, he get pop. These lyrics are just like cool, like it's, but it's nothing unique or different that would make me go, like this nigga spitting right now. I need something else to enhance the song for me to call it fire. And Solar Eclipse had nothing else. I would say that his singing was cool, but it wasn't nothing great that I liked, like some of his other songs. So for Solar Eclipse, like it, it mostly comes down to this being just a mid song lyrically is why I overall don't mess with it. I didn't really care for like the beat either. So it wasn't really nothing to make up for his lackluster lyrics for me. The final YouTube recommendation is from D Wade is the GOAT, and he suggested I listen to I Am Who They Say I Am. Hey, now, I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. As soon as I searched up this song and I saw that Taekwion was a feature, I went, haha, this song about to be hard. He about to kill it. Now, as I've been saying, because I've already accepted that Young Boy is mid lyrically, I look for other things to call fire about him. For I am who they say I am, everything else about this song was crazy good. The Ashanti Rain On Me sample was used to perfection. I have no complaints about anyone's flow. Not Young Boys, not Bowman's. And did I say Kevin Gates was on this song? But y yeah, he here too. Gates and Bowman just simply talked about their lives in the streets, but now they made it out and they got bitches and money. They both sounded pretty good and they definitely add to the overall like fireness of the track. <laughs> Now the song itself, Youngboy is pretty much saying he knows who he is at heart and he knows the type of person he is and the life he's living. So anyone else that has anything else to say, he doesn't really care. This is aimed obviously at the haters. People saying he's a negative influence or dusty ass YouTubers saying he's not a lyrically strong rapper. He's telling all of them out there like, if you don't like me, like that's cool. But he also says like, even if you do like me, that's cool. Nobody else's opinion is gonna change the way I act. This even goes into how the women feel about him. Some hoes say I'm handsome, some of them say I'm ugly, some say that I'm the realest, but I still ain't saying nothing. And that leads into the hook of. One of my favorite lines is, stayed away from all the bullshit niggas say I'm running, time passed over and now you see that I was chasing money. It reminded me of a line from one of my favorite rappers, T Grizzly, where he said, in my city if you win and you can't stay, they call being broke real, they call getting money fake. Because that's how a lot of people in the hood are. Once you start making your own moves and you stop hanging around them as much because you're focused on like succeeding in something, 
people just started thinking that you don't like them anymore or something. But D-Wade is the GOAT, like, you the GOAT for suggesting this one. Th this was hard, and it's certainly a young boy song that I come back to. The final Instagram recommendation is from at underscore SochaMama4, and he said to check out Deceive the Motions. You only let me love you if you stay. It go on and on and on and on and on. Yeah. Turn up Kentrell. Here we have another dub with his singing. Like, I for sure replayed Deceive the Motions like four times after first hearing it. This is a track where I know the hood niggas that listen to Youngboy will call this one of his most relatable songs because he was on some thug love stuff here. One of the things he touched on is how difficult it is for him to accept love because his own mother never told him that she loved him. So he's asking, like, if my own mom don't love me, how am I supposed to expect someone else to? And stuff like this is what this song is, him explaining why he's so sheltered when it comes to expressing his emotions and why he takes them so seriously. Another thing he mentions is how you should never fight for a chick that's not showing you the same type of love, and especially if she wants to leave. For y'all separate, y'all can talk it out. What she need for the leave, you should give it all. If she feel that nigga better, then he better than that nigga raw. If you came up once, you can never fall. If you love her, don't let her walk. If she push you away, open the gate, you gotta let her out. What adds to the whole experience of listening to this song is his singing. Like, that shit was hitting hard on this song. If you're a fella out there that's been in some shitty relationships, especially ones where you may have got your heart broken, like you cared a lot about the girl but she didn't care about you, you'll be able to relate heavy to this song. And it's certainly a great listen if you're currently going through something like that. Man, this nigga, this young boy got another dub under his belt with this one. Next up is a song that was hyped up by a lot of y'all. Like, this was legit being praised as a top three young men song by a hell of people. So, recommended on Twitter by at Anomaly LPFJ. We have Casey Talk. To all the people that told me Casey Talk was a song about young boy's son, why did y'all lie to me? Seriously, like, what did I do to y'all where y'all felt the need to trick and deceive me? I listened to Casey Talk and this nigga only talked about his son one time. At the very end of the track, he simply says, me and Casey and this bitch. And his son actually has an ad lib in there. Y'all yeah. gotta start paying attention to the songs y'all listen to. Like just because it's named after his son and his son is in the music video and has one little adorable ad lib doesn't mean the song is about him. He doesn't talk about Casey at all in the song. He doesn't talk about any of his other children, his struggles, or even the benefits of being a father at all. The entire song is his typical raps about having money, how he feels about love and women, and coming from the slums. And actually, before I even highlight some of the lyrics, the end of the first verse is annoying as hell. That entire part of the P E R C yeah, I almost dislike this entire song just off that alone. <laughs> but although it sounds like I'm doing nothing but slander in the track, I will say that I like the song. I really like the beginning of the hook of New Coop. Uh, take off because i know these niggas ain't gonna hear nothing new suit yeah big boss that that's cool <laughs> but like i mentioned the rest of the song is that like, you're a typical young boy check out how i'm living i just went and got another house millions in the bank got another man for one but three you stay added up if you can't count and then other lines like swift young nigga show her how to get the money oh <laughs> jealous young nigga hit it from the back got a touch on her toes this is seriously the equivalent of drake making a song called adonis and him saying uh, yeah, I, I made this song to talk about my little boy. And then he spent the entire track talking about how much money he has, his relationships with past girlfriends, and like him talking about his mom, like pretty much anything but his son. Overall, I will say that I like Casey Talk, like it's good enough. I just feel like I gave y'all four years of my life with this YouTube shit, and for y'all to lie to me is heartbreaking. <laughs> okay, let me, let me stop messing with y'all. <laughs> Other than the end of the first verse, like this song is straight. Lastly, we got a song that I always thought like the title was kind of weird ever since y'all told me about it. But hopefully the song isn't weird. I want it to be a dub. Recommended on Twitter by at React Hunt Houdini. It's the song Diamond Teeth Samurai. Dog, the Lil Wayne influence was tough as hell on this song. Not even just the part of the chorus where he says, the black is hot, the black is hot. Not even that. Everything from his voice to his flow, I felt like I was listening to 90s and early 2000s Wayne. 
And on top of that, the grittiness of the lyrics, like, this song hit for me after the first listen. This is what I'm talking about when I say, because he's not strong lyrically, I need something else to make the track fire. And this song was all around nice as hell. The feel you get from playing this, it's like you immediately get in the mood to hit a lick. Police hit our stash house, but we ain't closing shop. They got some niggas moving work who stay right up the block. Not going to dough, I need a zone. Yeah, I got the guap. Soon as you open up the dough, he gon' see the Glock. Like anybody out there, if somebody owes you money right now and you play this song, you're going to get dressed and say, you know what? Let me stop playing and go get my shit. <laughs> this is your simple like gun toting track, but I promise you, this song is hard, yo. And it's made even fire if you're already a Wayne fan. You seriously can't hate on this one. <laughs> Now, after I had all of these suggestions picked out when I first announced the video, I head to my Twitter a couple of hours later and I see the man, the legend himself, Blackie Speaks, responded to my announcement. If you guys remember, there was already a big hip-hop YouTuber who gave me a suggestion, and that was Gully Boy. So then when I saw Blackie Speaks recommend a song, I'm like, damn, like, young boy bringing out everybody. Blackie even put out another tweet like a week later saying, young boy is a great artist, y'all need to admit it. So I'm putting a lot of value behind this recommendation, and he better not miss. But here we are, the bonus song and final song in this video, recommended on Twitter by Blackie Speaks, is Untouchable. Okay, so already I can see why this can be praised as Young Boy's number one best song. It's definitely one of his most personal. Considering this is the song that blew him up and introduced everyone to him, it's not surprising that this is one of the tracks he put his heart into. This is also the only song he has where he has a genius interview about it, so I recommend watching that because he discusses the background about the song and how he was on a lot of codeine when he made it, and then he made it a few months before he went to jail. When he got out, everybody was telling him, like, yo, you should release like that song Untouchable as like your return song. Untouchable is one of those it's my time now kind of songs where a rapper is just starting to blow up or has already blown up, so they make a song about I did this for my mama and my brothers. I dropped out of school to chase my dreams. I was down bad. I had no money and food, like all those kind of things. Now, pretty much anybody can make a song like this, but not everyone can go on to be pretty much the most popular rapper in the game. That's why this song is so good and it hits so hard for NBA Young Goat because this song came out in 2016 and then fast forward and seeing how far he came, it's a major dub how he spoke this into existence. And I definitely see why people consider it his best song. Funny enough, this is why I can't mess with the song Genie because the way he was talking at the beginning of that song, I thought it was gonna be something heavy hitting like this, but that ended up being some mid. So the question of if I'm sleeping on young boy, for the first time in this series, the answer is not yes, but it's also not no either. I would say I'm sleeping on him a little bit. Songs like Diamond Thief Samurai, I Am Who They Say I Am, Permanent Scars, and Deceived Emotions, I see why people say he hard. But even with the songs that I like from him, I don't see how this dude is this popular. He is definitely getting pushed by someone or something to be having 50 million views on every song he drops. Youngboy is definitely not ass. Like for those of you who say, y'all hyping him up way too much, that nigga's garbage. Youngboy is not a bad rapper, let's get it straight. But I do definitely understand the people that say they can't get into Youngboy because they tried and they either hate his voice or they think he's just mid and overhyped a little. His biggest flaw in my opinion is that he's an extremely generic lyricist. Almost everything out his mouth is cookie cutter street lyrics that have existed in rap for the longest and you can hear the same rhymes from any other street rapper. But if you're someone where you don't really care what someone is saying, you just want a melody and something that sounds good with a good flow and whatnot. Youngboy will hit for you. His flow is fire and his singing be nice a lot of the times. But if you're someone like me where really basic lyrics can be a bit of a turnoff, I won't say that he's someone you're missing out on entirely. He definitely has some tracks that I recommend you, don't get it fucked up. But at the end of the day, I understand both sides of the fence. He has some misses and some flaws, but for the people who say he's like trash, y'all are big time tripping. He got some heat. However, he's not anything incredible to where all these people should be lusting over him and saying he's the best rapper in the game. I'm sorry, but Boy Boy isn't that good. Outro, outro. If, if, if.